Welcome to the first public meeting for the Rice Street Holly Boulevard Corridor Study. The purpose of today's meeting centers around three main topics. First is to introduce the study. Second is to provide background information on why we are conducting the study. And third is to gather comments and feedback to help identify transportation related issues and needs to be addressed by this study, as well as goals and priorities to help develop the long range vision for the corridor. The study advisory team is organized to help guide the study through completion. It's made up of representatives from the city of Brandon, city of Sioux Falls, Minnehaha County, the Southeastern Council of Governments, South Dakota Department of Transportation, and Federal Highway Administration. The study area focuses on the Rice Street and Holly Boulevard corridor, starting at the I-229 interchange in Sioux Falls at the west end and extending eastward to the South Dakota 11 Split Rock Boulevard intersection in Brandon. There are five main objectives to this corridor study. The first is to determine the number of lanes needed along the corridor to address anticipated traffic growth and development. Plan level timelines of when and where additional lane needs may arise are a key component to this objective and will assist with planning for future projects. Second is to develop alternatives for all arterial or major intersections in order to evaluate different intersection types and how well they integrate with other improvements along the corridor. Third is to develop corridor access management plan, which evaluates existing access and plans for future access and access related modifications. Fourth is to develop a corridor land use plan to help tie future development needs with long range corridor improvements. And ultimately, number five is to develop a long range corridor plan with recommendations and plan level timelines that encompass the diverse modes of travel throughout this corridor which includes passenger cars, trucks, bicyclists and pedestrians, and railroad. We anticipate the schedule will extend for approximately 10 months and is broken into four key phases. The first phase began in May and includes the baseline conditions analysis to identify transportation related issues and needs to be addressed by the study and establish study goals and priorities. This phase culminates with this first public meeting to incorporate your input of what you see throughout the corridor on a day-to-day -day basis and thoughts of what to address with this study. We take all this information from the first phase and move into the second phase to draft the access and land use plans and develop and evaluate alternatives. From there, we move into the third phase, which includes an iteration or two of refinement prior to coming back for our second public meeting to present alternatives and elements of the access and land use plans for your review and comment. With your feedback, we will go through another iteration of refinement prior to moving into the fourth phase, which includes developing recommendations and drafting the report. In early 2024, we will hold the third public meeting to share preliminary recommendations for review and comment prior to the final refinement iteration and ultimately finalizing the study. And that concludes this presentation's brief introduction to the study. The remainder of the presentation will focus on a few highlights from the baseline conditions analysis, which includes walking through current roadway jurisdiction in the city of Sioux Falls and city of Brandon growth areas, daily traffic volumes from both recent traffic counts and future year forecast perspectives, crash history review findings, and other transportation components being analyzed as part of the study. An important component of this study is understanding current roadway jurisdiction, or essentially what agency is responsible for a roadway segment from an ownership and or maintenance perspective. There are four main agencies with roadway jurisdiction at some point within the Rice Street Holly Boulevard study corridor, which is one of the key reasons for the multi-agency study. Current City of Sioux Falls jurisdiction extends west of and includes the Veterans Parkway intersection, as shown in the figure on the right. Current Minnehaha County jurisdiction extends east of Veterans Parkway to just west of Arbor Ridge Road in Brandon, and then picks up again east of Sandstone Avenue extends eastward through the Big Sioux River Bridge. City of Brandon jurisdiction includes the Arbor Ridge Road intersection, extends eastward through the Sandstone Avenue intersection, and then continues eastward from the east side of the Big Sioux River Bridge. And then finally, the South Dakota Department of Transportation has jurisdiction of the I-229 Rice Street interchange in Sioux Falls and South Dakota Highway 11 or Split Rock Boulevard in Brandon. 
Current growth areas for the city of Sioux Falls and the city of Brandon are shown in the figure on the right. The growth boundary for the two communities is Six Mile Road, with Sioux Falls extending to the west and Brandon to the east. This boundary and timeline of growth throughout the area are important elements when determining the future improvements and implementation timelines along the corridor. The next few slides touch on traffic volumes developed for the study. The figure on the right is one of two views that make up the daily volume display board and shows daily segment volumes throughout the study area for different time frames. Within each series of stacked volumes, the top volume reflects existing volumes based on traffic counts collected in May and June of this year. Future traffic forecasts were developed using the Sioux Falls MPO travel demand model to identify future capacity needs and ultimately will help develop and evaluate alternatives. The future year traffic volumes for the study include year 2028, which reflects approximately five years of traffic growth and an opening day of the first potential project that may come out of the study. The third volume is year 2040, and it reflects a future interim year. And then the bottom volume is year 2050, and that's the study's planning price and reflect upwards of 25 to 30 years of area development and traffic growth. Narrowing in on specific daily volumes to give you an idea of what we are anticipating for traffic growth, we'll first start with the existing daily volumes for corridor segments from just west of I-229 eastward to Six Mile Road. These volumes reflect a continuous 24-hour volume on a typical weekday. As shown on this slide, current daily volumes are highest between I-229 and Bonson Avenue at approximately 14,000 vehicles per day and decrease as you move eastward towards Veterans Parkway. When looking at the anticipated traffic growth for year 2028 daily volume shown in the gray rectangles and year 2040 daily volume shown in the blue rectangles, traffic is expected to increase upwards of 4 to 6,000 vehicles per day over the next 10 to 15 years. And this is due to continued development and redevelopment along the corridor, increasing travel between Brandon and Sioux Falls, as well as increasing use of I-229 and Veterans Parkway. And then finally, looking at the year 2050 plane horizon daily volumes shown in the orange rectangles, we see the long range growth leading to daily volumes upwards of 20,000 vehicles per day between I-229 and Veterans Parkway, which are at levels that signify strong support for considering and evaluating additional lanes on Rice Street with this study. Shifting east to the Brandon growth area, east of Six Mile Road, Existing daily volumes are upwards of 11,000 vehicles per day west of Sioux Boulevard and are then slightly less as you move east towards Split Rock Boulevard. When looking at growth over the next 10 to 15 years, we expect volume increases upwards of 4,000 vehicles per day or more west of Sioux Boulevard due to development west of Big Sioux River. One thing the daily volume numbers don't show is the expected change in traffic patterns in this area where continued development will create more local trips or reverse commute trips that don't reflect the existing highly directional traffic flow that we see in the morning and afternoon commute times. East of Sioux Boulevard, traffic growth is expected to be considerably less than the developing areas further to the west. And then finally, looking at the year 2050 plane horizon daily volume shown in the orange rectangles, Similar to the west half of the corridor, we see the long-range growth reaching upwards of 17,500 vehicles per day and supporting strong consideration and evaluation of additional lanes on Holly Boulevard, west of Sioux Boulevard. So what does the anticipated traffic growth mean in terms of long-range needs? The site team completed preliminary traffic operations analysis that looks at peak hour intersection volumes reflective of your morning and late afternoon commute times and developed a display board, which is shown here, that illustrates approximate timeframes for when improvements could be needed. For example, over the next five years up to year 2028, the analyzed traffic volumes are showing capacity needs for improvement at the Rice Street approaches to Veterans Parkway and at the future Lancer Avenue intersection due to planned development. By year 2040, the capacity needs continue to include those locations if they're not addressed and expand to include the I-229 northbound ramp terminal, Cleveland Avenue intersection, and Bonson Avenue and Six Mile Road intersections where longer delays at the stop controlled approaches should be monitored. One thing I do want to stress is that this type of assessment isn't the definitive timeline of when improvement should be implemented, 
As there are several factors that play into this, such as development timelines and density and funding for future projects. But this gives a good illustration of where the first needs are expected to show up with increasing traffic volumes. The study team also reviewed the history of reported crashes for years 2018 through 2022. The figure on the right illustrates the density of these crashes throughout the study corridor, and the review highlighted locations for further consideration of crash mitigation, which included the I-229 interchange area, such as the southbound and northbound ramp terminal intersections, as well as Rice Street corridor segments extending east from Lowell Avenue to Bonson Avenue. Other areas include the Veterans Parkway intersection, as well as the Sioux Boulevard to Split Rock Boulevard segment within the Brandon area. Crashes in these highlighted areas were typically angle and rear end type crashes at major intersections or access points, and angle crashes were more likely to result in injuries. And finally, before concluding the presentation, I would like to note a few of the other study components we'll be looking at over the next few months. First, the study team will be reviewing existing land use and access points, such as the areas shown on the slide, and evaluating potential access management treatments to address safety and operational issues. We'll also be determining future land use along the corridor and identifying future access points to support that land use in developing areas. A second component is evaluating the railroad crossings west of Veterans Parkway for potential grade separation or overpasses. This includes reviewing grade separation warrants established by the City of Sioux Falls, developing alternatives to understand the feasibility and impacts of an overpass, and coordinating long-range needs with the railroads in the area. A third component is evaluating the feasibility of potential new roadway connections. An example is the Benson Road Extension, where a potential project was identified in the 2045 Sioux Falls MPO Long Range Transportation Plan as an unfunded roadway corridor project. The LRTP noted benefits to east-west connectivity and freight in the area. This study will help take that potential connection forward and further assess feasibility, quantify benefits and drawbacks, and determine next steps. A fourth study component is related to bicycle and pedestrian connectivity and route continuity. Both the City of Brandon and City of Sioux Falls recently completed bicycle plans, and this study will use that information as a foundation to take multimodal planning to the next step and incorporate bicycle and pedestrian enhancements with alternatives developed for the study. And finally, the study will include a sub-area analysis of existing access, traffic flow, and multimodal travel along and across Holly Boulevard from 4th Avenue through 7th Avenue in Brandon. This sub-area analysis will begin this fall with supplemental data collection after school starts. Before concluding the presentation, we'd like to circle back to the final objective of this meeting where we are looking for your input on transportation-related issues and needs to be addressed by the study and identifying goals and priorities to help develop the long-range vision for the corridor. There are several opportunities to provide comments, including submitting a comment card available at the public open house, reaching out directly to any of the study contacts, submitting a comment through the study website, or completing a brief survey about the corridor. And with that, the study team would like to thank you for your interest and participation in the corridor study. We are requesting comments back by Friday, July 28th, so we can move into the next phase of the study where we'll develop, refine, and evaluate concepts. We will be back to present concepts at the second public open house this fall. Study information and study contacts are shown here and available on the informational handout and on the website. Again, thank you for your input, and we will see you again later this fall.